Hi folks, my name is J.M. Erlinson and I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the Eris platform. And today we're going through another in our series of videos called Help, I'm an Eris admin, how to support your first Eris project or instance. Now what we're gonna be talking about today is creating object libraries. What does that mean, what does that take? And showing you a really simple process by which you can import content using the Eris Connect interface. And that's a pretty interesting way of doing things. It's a relatively new function for the Eris platform. And I'm excited to show you the fast way of getting information in from bulk sets of information. Um, now we're, we're gonna go through a couple of different processes. This is gonna be the simplest way of doing things. And then we're gonna go through a couple layers of more complex imports. But for now, let's start with this. So what is an object library? What is an object library function is? Well, first and foremost, it's a place where you can keep all of your reusable knowledge. A perfect example of an object library is in the case of our demonstration database, you might have a library of organizational units or IT systems or things like that. Um, and to give you an example of that, of what that might, might look like, uh, you might have a, just a bunch of information laid out either in sort of structures um, in the case of you know sort of hierarchy diagrams or nested objects um, that looks a little bit uh, like this uh, our domains model <clears throat> which will lay out things as, as uh, sort of nested object sets so you can sort of see core what's our core applications what, what, what's the platform what's the application underneath it um, or they can just simply be lay, laid out information um, alphabetically, um, simple ways of getting people information so they can sort of browse what's, what options are available. No matter what object libraries function essentially as a palette from which people can pull reusable information. They're really important, particularly in reusable knowledge object types, things like applications, people, um, capabilities, risks, uh, data those sorts of things that tend not to change at the same velocity that process might, um, that tend to be reused or find themselves occurring across multiple different models. Um, you wanna understand the interconnectivity of things. And to do that, you need to have this sort of reusable information that you find reused, and then you can track its location, see who, see who is touching on those particular parts of the, uh, of the architecture, um, and understand the impact of change. So for instance, if I wanna change an application, I need to be able to see this application A plan, um, it exists in a bunch of different places. Um, and I can simply take a look at, hey, what, what are all of its relationships? So here are all the things it ties to. So if I'm gonna change it, you know, I need to be aware of that. And that's simply in, in everything's properties. Um, so you can double click on an object, um, click on the relationships tab, um, or on the occurrences tab to understand uh, what models that particular object exists in. And this ha happens in both Eris Connect and Eris Architect. Now we wanna build these. Um, we're gonna keep them in a separate area. We've talked about before in the group structure for a lot of reasons, but the primary one is actually for permissioning. We wanna make sure that these are things that are not changeable by our modelers in general. Um, we wanna make sure that as administrators, we can sort of you know, protect them from, from the, the casual changes and then allow our architects access to make those larger changes that will, might impact multiple models because we know that they're gonna take the time to go through and understand those impacts and be able to com you know, communicate with all of our affected parties um, and be able to sort of push that information out to those communities. So to create a library, um, it's really simple. I'm actually gonna do this all in Ares Connect. Um, now, you, as, as we've seen, you know, if you've seen some of the previous videos, you saw sort of the idea of creating a repository and a structure. I'm gonna go under my demo database. Um, which is gonna have a few different things. So you see I'm here, I'm here in Ares Connect. I've clicked on repository. That means everything I'm doing is essentially creating um, and, and modifying structures. And I can just click these little arrows that point to the right and it'll sort of drill in and drill down. Now you see I've already created folders for these libraries and underneath those, underneath those folders, I'm gonna to wanna to create uh, different types of information models that will contain our library elements. So I can create an application library under my application by creating an application system di type diagram, um, which is one of, our, one of our types of diagrams. For today's example, I'm gonna create an organizational library. I have somebody sent me this Excel file, it's got a bunch of roles and their descriptions. Simple enough. I know it's not very detailed. We'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. Um, but this is just a high level, like, here's how I might get information from somebody. And I'm gonna to go to the organization over here and create a new model. Um, and if I take, type, type in my, or, my model type, I can type org and it's, you see it's gonna be an organizational chart is one of the options that comes up by default. We talked in the past about creating um, custom models um, and changing a method to change the names or change the content of your models. We're not gonna take a look at that right now. Right now, all we're gonna do is just create my example 
um, org charts here. Um, and that org chart is going to sit under the organization. And it's going to be blank. So it's going to start as a blank uh, sort of canvas upon which to place my, my stuff. Um, what I want to do is I want to import things from this Excel file. So how do I get things from Excel into Eris? Well, um, you could choose to copy and paste the text one at a time uh, into the into objects you place in the model. Um, and that would, that would be a little bit more time consuming. We've actually created a little button over here called create objects, which is a great way of importing uh, large sets of information um, and just sort of simple attributes. I'm gonna hit create objects and it's gonna pop open a little menu for me. As a note for you, the reason I'm doing this in Ares Connect is because this function only exists in Ares Connect. So as, a, as an administrator, you're gonna wanna have access um, and sort of move between Ares Architect and Ares Connect depending on what you're doing on the day. Um, this is a process you'll probably only do once per domain. So you'll probably do this once per for all the applications, once for all your all of your organizational units. Um, remember, we're, we're we're taking a look at this as a simple scenario where you're not looking at doing sort of you know RESTful API calls and connections and so sort of integrations into other source source systems. That's a much more technical topic, and we certainly do it with the Ares platform. But this is an example of you know I'm setting up a quick and easy um, instance for people to work. So this create objects um, window essentially is, is meant to be pasted into. So I'm going to go over here and just let me select all the things that I want, copy them and go paste. And now it's going to ask me two things. It's going to say, okay, so you've got um, two columns here. Um, the first column needs to be, uh, you need to select the symbol type um, that you're going to have. And the first column defaults as the name. So we're you're just assuming that these are all the names in the first column and that every column to the right of that is going to be other properties. So you want to make sure your, your spreadsheet is laid out in this fashion. So copy and paste around your, um, around your different columns so that they, they get in the right order. And I'm going to choose the type of role. I happen to like role. There was a, a previous video I filmed on the difference between roles, positions, and other types of organizational units. I, I think it's probably best to, to start with role. Those are the ones that are a little bit more um, static. They're a little, little easier to handle than having to worry about you know, the names of actual positions that can, that can change pretty often and certainly not internal person. Um, those, you know, the, you know, HR systems, uh, people move around a lot and it's a little harder to, to keep track of. So let's try and get your users um, using role. And then on the right, it's going to say choose attributes. So once you've selected um, the type of object that you're going to be importing, um, you can select from the attributes that object is allowed. We've talked about that in the method before. Um, you, you, so you make those uh, available to your users. And I'm going to say description. So it's pre-selected, but you know, there's lots of different things we're allowed to choose here. Um, and as a note for you, this is going to come up later, but this is actually a reduced list. Um, if you've looked at the method video, you can see there's tons and tons of attributes I could have selected from. Um, in this in this object, pay, uh, create objects, uh, it's automatically filtered down to the ones that are easy for us to paste in, which is actually going to mean that we have to use a different method for some more complicated import processes. But we're just going to go with description, and I hit OK. And I hit OK again. And you'll see my cursor becomes the outline of a bunch of objects. So I click once, once, and all of them paste onto the page. So what, what was this is now this. Well, what does that do? Well, every object underneath this now has the attribute um, of their description captured in it. And now I can easily access all these uh, objects whenever I'm choosing to make models. So if I want to put, put a BPMN diagram in there, I've now got, you know, a role that quickly I can just, as I type ACC, it's going to say, oh, do you want to reselect accountant? And now it's coming from my organizational chart. And that's pretty handy. Now, you can lay this out however you want. You can drag these boxes around. Um, you can create higher level organizational units upon, under which they fall. If you want to create your own hierarchies, but at least you've created your first set of information. I'm going to hit save over here and you'll see if I look at my objects in the objects tab and now I've got all these objects created for me underneath this model and that is your very first library simple to create that create objects button is really handy so make sure you're using connect and that's how we get started with making our object libraries thank you so much once again for paying attention uh, I'm, I'm jm erlinson uh, please feel free to leave lots of feedback and comments on all these videos we love hearing that feedback and we're looking to make a lot more content that, that's appealing to our communities and to our clients um, and to people who are interested in finding out more about the ARIS platform until the next video i'm jm erlinson we'll see you there